Hello everybody, this is Tim here again for Boomstick Critique. Once again, outside. <laughs> Except this time, it's cold as fuck. <laughs> I'm fucking freezing, man. But, uh, I figured I'd go ahead and do my review for Shocker right now, though, anyway. Since I was, I'm up, I've been up all fucking night drinking caffeine and partying down, baby. <laughs> and I watched Shocker, and so I said, fuck it, do the review now. I don't give a shit how cold it is. Everybody's partied out, passed out in the house, can't wake them the fuck up, so I gotta come out here and do it. The way I like it. <laughs> but yeah, <coughs> it's jump in shocker, baby. Uh, one of my, one of what I consider the most fun Wes Craven movies. Uh, shocker is a riot. It's I'd give, I'd just go ahead and say it, I give it three stars. It's a good movie. It's not great. Uh, it's not as good as People Under the Stars or Serpent in the Rainbow. But I still really like the movie. Uh, even if I even if I didn't like it as much as I do, I would still enjoy the movie on a pure entertainment level. This is pretty much like a popcorn B-movie slasher movie, really. The plot, you got Horace Pinker, played by Mitch Pileggi. This movie would not be half as good without Mitch Pileggi in this movie. He makes this movie. He has so much damn fun in this movie uh, as Horace Pinker, the killer. Mitch Pileggi is also in. He was in Supernatural, one of the seasons. I forgot which. Uh, he was also in The X-Files. He's great in this movie. Fantastic performance. He plays a bad, like a real psychopath that you would believe could fuck somebody up, man. <laughs> he does great. And Peter Berg plays like the kid who's having dreams of Horace Pinker. And Horace Pinker's like the serial killer in the town and nobody can catch him. And Peter Berg is this kid, this uh, jock that's having like dreams of him. And uh, he's the only person that knows what he looks like. Sorry, I had a bug try to fly towards me. But, uh, yeah, Peter Berg's the only one that knows what he looks like. And so he winds up helping the, the um, his dad, his stepdad, who is a cop, catch Horace Pinker. And they electrocute him. And the motherfucker has made a deal with Satan. And he comes back to life as, like, electricity. And he jumps from body to body. So it is a body-hopping movie. It's one of those. But it's extremely fun. This whole movie is very reminiscent of A Nightmare on Elm Street, though. And I know that's one of the problems some horror fans have with it. Is that this movie does a lot of the same style stuff from A Nightmare on Elm Street because Craven felt like he was fucked over in terms of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise by New Line by New Line Cinema in terms of like what he thought he was going to get paid based off his character being used in other movies and shit like that. So he felt like he was fucked over. So he wanted to try and make his uh, a new you know horror icon with Horace Pinker. And I wish this character would have became another big horror icon. As it is though, this movie on its own it is good. I would have loved to have seen Mitch Pileggi come back for sequels. That would have been awesome. But as it is, though, it is it is a good movie. And Peter Berg, it, it, uh, people bitch about his acting in the movie. I thought he was fine. Uh, he's never great, but he is good in the movie for most of the movie. I'm not expecting, uh, I mean, and I mean, it's the guy's first movie. I'm not expecting to be blown away by this dude. This is his first movie. But he is good in the movie. Um, his girlfriend, though, the girl that plays his girlfriend, she's really pretty, really pretty woman. But uh, but her acting isn't as good as Peter Berg's, and she's not that good of an actor. She's all right at best in the movie. <clears throat> Horace Pinker kills her in the movie and like writes her writes Happy Birthday Jonathan, which is Peter Berg's character. He like writes that in blood on the wall. You find out that Horace Pinker is actually like uh, Peter Berg's character's real dad, and that's why they have like a spiritual type connection thing, which is never really explained. I mean, just because he's a son, why does he have like a spiritual connection with him? <clears throat> It's never really explained, but at the same time, they're deliberately, it seems like Wes Craven is deliberately leaving stuff out for sequels. That way, in, in case this movie's a big hit, he could do a sequel. <clears throat> but <at> the, <clears throat> sorry, it's fucking cold. I had to cough right there. So if this review gets a little bit, you know, off the wall, it's mostly because I'm freezing to fucking death. But anyway, um, but yeah, back to, I'm sorry, I, I went out of my mind there for a second. But anyway, back to Shocker. Yeah, um, yeah, Peter Burt, yeah, I like the whole spiritual connection between him and uh, Mitch Pileggi. It's not really thought out very well. It's just basically it's hinted at that because Mitch Pileggi's character, Horace Pinker, practices voodoo, that some of it's like passed down to his son somehow. And his son, that's how his son's able to like have dreams of Mitch Pileggi, of Horace Pinker, I mean, and how he's able to like bring stuff out of his dreams and shit, which is you can take him directly from a Nightmare on Elm Street. But at the same time, I say, how can Craven rip himself off? If he wants to do the, the similar style shit he did in Nightmare on Elm Street, more power to him. Fuck it. It's his, it's his story. A Nightmare on Elm Street is his story. Uh, if he wants to reuse ideas from that, he should have the authority to do so. But. 
and uh, of course Horace Pinker kills Peter Berg's uh, girlfriend, uh, and she comes back as a ghost. And uh, and the way she looks all bloodied up after she comes out of the shower really looks really reminds me of Tina from A Nightmare on Elm Street, like in the body bag all bloodied up. Even some of the scenes in this movie are similar to A Nightmare on Elm Street, but I like it. I fucking love A Nightmare on Elm Street. So making like a brother, you know, movie to A Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, pretty much in Shocker is is cool in my opinion. I, I like that. Some people don't like that about this movie, but I enjoy it. The only time I don't like it is when like Peter Berg is having a dream and there's like these little kids similar to A Nightmare on Elm Street that like run behind him. And they run and like uh, out into the street, and then they all disappear. They're like kind of similar to the Elm Street children. That's a little bit too on the nose. You didn't really need that shit, but it's it's there, and it doesn't really take anything away from the movie or nothing. <clears throat> There's just no reason for it to be there, really. And it's too on the nose a little bit to a Nightmare on Elm Street. Other than that, everything else I was fine with. Um, <clears throat> when Peter Berg's girlfriend gets killed, he he goes into the house and finds her like dead and like with blood all in the bathtub. Uh, and he has a pretty good scene here where he's like so emotionally heartbroken. He just like shuts down and his, da his stepdad has to pull him out of the room. I like that. Peter Berg's acting once again is not great in the movie, but he is good. Uh, the worst he ever gets is like okay anyway. He's never bad in my opinion in the movie. Um, weak spots in the movie. Sometimes the movie uh, – well, weak spots in the movie is that the movie has a tonal change. When it starts out, it plays itself really seriously with Horace Pinker as this uh, – force to be reckoned with, and even through the rest of the movie, he's still a force to be reckoned with. But what I'm trying to say is that the movie has a really serious tone to it for like the first half of the movie, then after Horace Pinker dies and comes back to life, it switches over It switches over to like a B movie, with Horace Pinker jumping from body to body, and it puts a lot of comedy in it, and the comedy is funny as fuck. I love the B movie like part of, the, uh, of this movie. When it turns into a B movie... Uh, a straight up B movie. I love it. And also, the movie had this movie has an amazing soundtrack. As soon as this movie starts off, you got Horace Pinker gearing up just like Freddy Krueger did in the first of Nightmare on Elm Street, and he's like cleaning off his knife and everything, and it's playing this awesome song where it's like Shaka, Shaka. <laughs> I love it, man. Uh, this movie has a great soundtrack. Alice Cooper's on the soundtrack. Iggy Pop. I love me some Iggy Pop. Uh, fucking uh, Bonfire, I believe is the name of the band, plays Sword in the Stone. Fucking awesome. This movie has a terrific soundtrack. Um, yeah, even if you don't like the movie, you will fucking like this soundtrack if you like rock or metal. Or especially old school metal like I like. You will love this shit. And I'm a huge metal fan, I gotta admit I am. And so this is like fucking, man, even if I didn't like this movie, I would watch it for the soundtrack. I do like this movie though. It's just so much fun. It does get a little cheesy with the Horace Pinker, though, jumping from body to body. Some of the lines, like when he's possessed this girl and he snaps this person's neck and he's like, how's, how's about a little head? <laughs> or something like that. And it's, it's kind of like, hey. But, you know, you can let that go because it's a B movie now, so you're not as you're not going to judge as harshly because it's just meant to be fun. This is like a popcorn slasher movie. It's just meant to be fun. I have no problem with movies that meant to, or just need to be fun. That's not saying I don't enjoy horror movies that try to be more than that, like The Exorcist or whatever, but I still like shit like this. I can have fun with a movie, and this is a fucking blast. This movie is a blast. Uh, this is just so much fun. He just jumps from body to body. I love when he possesses this cop and comes after Peter Berg at his house, and he fucking... Um, <laughs> So he's, uh, he's like, you got like a peephole, like right in front of your door when you look through. Uh, he holds like a pistol up to it or a gun. I mean, he holds a pistol up to it and fucking like shoots through it and tries to shoot Peter Berg. And, uh, the, he's, Horace Pinker's like in his body and he has lines like, open up, asshole! <laughs> and he's like chasing him down in the park where you get a lot of fun action. He's chasing after Peter Berg and he keeps jumping from body to body. This is a really fun part in the movie, uh, sh uh uh, Horace Pinker jumps from body to body like electricity, pretty much like static electricity. Um, he gets inside this little girl, and he fucking uh, kicks Peter Berg in the nuts. I love that. That was great. <laughs> he fucking tries to run him over like a bulldozer. That's amazing. Another thing I like about this movie, this movie actually has really good fight scenes. I mean, the fucking fight scenes in here are, are surprisingly good. Like, when Peter Berg and Mitch Pelleggi are duking it out, man, so their action scenes are good. Their fight scenes are. Like, Peter Berg's chasing after Mitch Pelleggi in the movie, and he, like, fucking... Peter Berg gets on, like, he's on, like, one building, top of one building, he fucking 
runs and jumps, man, and <laughs> lands only on top of the other one and fucking drops kick mid drop kicks Mitch uh, Pelagi against the fucking door. Uh, it's like, damn. That's one thing I like about the character of Jonathan uh, Parker in this movie is that he he don't take no fucking shit. I mean, he can he can fight back. He can dish it out. He's not just running around like a little pussy. I mean, he can kick ass and take names. He can fight. He can handle himself. So I really like that in this movie. Um, anything else? Um, oh, another scene I love is when uh, Horace Pinker possesses uh, Jonathan's stepdad, who doesn't die in the movie, but I love it when he possesses his stepdad. Uh, and he's like trying to shoot Jonathan. He's like, eat shit and die, you little fuck. Uh, I love that. That's great humor by Wes Craven. Uh, some of the humor, one scene though, kind of doesn't work. At the end of the movie, they're, uh, <laughs> well, basically, uh, Jonathan's girlfriend is a ghost and she, they got like this necklace with a heart on it. That's like a symbol of their love that gives uh, Jonathan power. Yes, it, people might see that as cheesy, but believe me, it's handled well in the movie. When you see it, it's not done as like a g goofy, silly type way. At least I bought into it. Fuck it, I don't know. But, uh, and he uses the necklace to like go inside the TV after Horace Pinker. And they're like jumping through different TV channels. Yes, the special effects are a little dated, but the motherfucking movie came out in 1988. I'm not expecting it to have Avatar special effects. For the time this came out, this is really fun. They're jumping from ch like channel to channel to different movies and shit. And they're, that's like Leave it to Beaver, I believe, is like driving in his car. And uh, John, uh, uh, fucking Peter Berg is running up next to the car. He's like, hey, Beaver, Beaver, and <laughs> trying to single him to get help. And fucking, there's another scene where they're like fighting in the background while Alice Cooper is like strangling somebody on stage. And then there's another one where they're fighting in the background and there's these two boxers going at it. And Horace, Horace Pinker hollers out and says, kick his ass! I love that shit, man. That was great. That's fucking hilarious. When the, when the comedy gets a little bad here is when they like come out of the TV into this, these people's room. And they're just kind of sitting there because they're such couch potatoes where they've been watching so much TV. It's like a joke like that. I don't even give a shit that somebody just came out of their television. I'm like, eh. And then there's like this big fat woman on the couch that has to say, I've heard of audience participation shows, but this is ridiculous. I'm like, wah, 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 where's the fucking laugh track? Uh, stupid shit like that. I didn't like that. That's one weak scene. Another thing is, um, at the end, uh, I love, um, well, this is not another weakness, but another thing I like, actually. But at the end, they, uh, they're they still duking it out, uh, Peter Berg and, uh, although Jonathan Parker, his character, and Horace Pinker are, they're still duking it out. And Peter Berg uses a remote control to control Horace Pinker, and he has him, he had, like, beating the shit out of his cell for the with a lamp and everything. It's hilarious. Peter Berg has his friends, like, go to cut the power, you know, to the TV station, so, you know, uh, Horace Pinker will get fried inside a TV land. He'll short out, basically. Um, and so they do that, and he uses the, uh, the necklace as uh, him and his girlfriend had. He uses it, he puts it in his fist, and like fucking bams Horace Pinker right in the face, and it's this big like electric shock shoots out when he hits him. The only thing bad about it is you, when, they, when Horace Pinker falls back, you can see it's a stuntman, which makes sense because most actors wouldn't want like electricity to go off in their face, so obviously they'd use a stuntman for that, but at the same time, they should try to do a little bit better job hiding it. You can, I am VHS tape, my old VHS tape, I couldn't tell, but watching it now on like a more clear DVD and Blu-ray, it's obvious it's a stuntman. But other than that, though, I love the effect when the power gets cut after Jonathan makes it out of TV land back into reality. Uh, when the power gets cut, I love the effect of, like, when Mitch Pelleggi is, like, floating in the air and he blows up, like, static electricity, like a bunch of pixels. I love that. That was great. I thought that was really cool. Um, and then, of course, Peter Berg is fine. One thing that was a little confusing is, like, is Horace Pinker actually dead or is he just, like, been defeated this one time? Because after Jonathan gets out, you can still hear Horace Pinker, like, talking, like, trying to get Jonathan to come back into the TV world or whatever. But then he just presses the power button on the re remote and turns the TV off and Horace Pinker just fades away. So I'm guessing he's meant to be dead or at least defeated for the time being. It's kind of like it's open-ended. Like, if they have a sequel, they can bring him back. But if they don't, the motherfucker's dead. Uh, so you can have it either way. So it, it, so it works, but at the same time, it, it is a little confusing. <clears throat> but after that, you get Jonathan walking outside. He's looking up at the stars, and he's talking to his dead girlfriend's ghost in his mind or whatever. And he's like, do you see these stars? And she replies back and says, absolutely beautiful. And I thought that was really sweet. And then the movie ends with the fucking badass rock song, Sword in the Stone. Uh, it's great. I love it. Um, but yeah, 
But yeah, uh, this movie, even though I love it, I'd still have to give it three stars. It's a good movie. It's a good, gr real, it's a good fun B movie. But for like the weak comedy aspects, I mean, for the weak comedy scene with uh, the fat woman on the couch or whatever, and some of the unexplained backstory with Jonathan and Horace Pinker of like the whole voodoo thing, uh, that kind of doesn't. It's not really meshed out, really. I mean, not really thought out really well in the movie. It really feels like they deliberately left stuff out to save it for sequels. Uh, that and the ending is a little bit confusing about whether Horace Pinker is dead or not. So for that, I gotta knock it down to at least a good movie. I mean, I gotta knock it down to a good movie instead of a great movie. But as it is, being a good movie is not a bad thing. Three stars for me out of four is a fucking high rating, as far as I'm concerned. That is stands for good, and I think this movie is good, and I really enjoy this movie. Uh, because it's such a good, adrenaline-fueled, fun popcorn horror movie. It is. No, it isn't great, but I don't need every fucking movie I watch to be great or amazing. It's a good popcorn horror movie, and one definitely worth checking out. And underrated as fuck. I mean, people who, like, are Wes Craven fans, I mean, they'll talk about it and be like, Well, I had some fun with it. It's kind of... I mean, not everybody. If you don't like the movie, that's fine. Whatever. I mean, I mean, well... I mean, if you don't like the movie, that's fine. Everybody has their different opinions. There's shit, you know, I don't like, obviously. And the same thing with everybody else. I have no problem with people not liking the movie. That's cool, you know. Uh, you know, different movies appeal to different people. But for me, personally, I just find that <clears throat> there's people who trash this movie for some reason, or at least used to. The movie's got a little bit of a cult following now. It's starting to pick up and be more well-liked in the horror community. But back in the day, man, this movie was trashed by a lot of people. Like, just putting it down, and I'm like, it's just meant to be fun. I mean, I don't know if people just, I think it really seemed like a lot of people were just disappointed in the humor that the movie put in when it became more of a of just a fun popcorn B movie when the first part of the movie was, like, more serious. I guess people were just like, I don't want to watch a fucking B movie. I want to see this movie play itself super seriously like a Nightmare on Elm Street. But if they would have done that, it wouldn't have been as much fun to me. I mean, I love the over-the-top funness of this movie, man, and with the TV channel jumping and everything, that just wouldn't really work in a super serious movie, but it's fun, I just, I just have fun with it, and I think that if, I, I just think that um, people watching this movie, going in, knowing what it is, I mean, I think if, if a person watches this movie, going in, knowing what it is, as a popcorn B mo horror film, that's just meant to be fun, I will think they will have a good time with this movie, maybe even a great time. Uh, I used to think the movie was uh, great as a kid. Watching it now that I'm older, though, I, th I still think it's good, but I don't think it's great. But I do think it's good and definitely one of Craven's better films. A lot better than My Shit to Take or My Soul to Take or whatever the fuck that was. A lot better than that one. Uh, and I'm a huge Craven fan. I am. I have the utmost respect for the man and his uh, you know, filmography of great horror films he's given us. And this is a good one. Um, it's not as good as People Under the Stars and Shocker. I mean, it's, well, what Shocker? It's not as good as People Under the Stars and Serpent and the Rainbow, but it's more fun than those two. I have much more fun with this one than I do those two. Like, I can, even though those two movies are better than this one, I can watch this movie over those two any day because this movie is just so much fun. Uh, but I will say, out of People Under the Stars, Shocker, and Serpent and the Rainbow, Serpent and the Rainbow is the best of those three, followed by People Under the Stars, then this movie. But I will say that the one I enjoy watching the most out of the three is this movie. So, yeah, all in all, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. It's cold as fuck out here, and I know you've been able to see my breath this whole damn review. So, <laughs> I'm sorry about that, but I had to come out here and do this review. I could have done it in the house, but I didn't want to <clears throat> wake anybody up. I felt like doing it as a common courtesy, plus I can handle the, the cold, so fuck it. <laughs> I just didn't want to <clears throat> wake anybody up in my house after we was all partying last night, so fuck it. But, um... Uh, yeah, as far as this movie goes, three stars, good movie, uh, a lot of fun, and definitely worth checking out. And I'll see you guys again with the next review.